Folks, in the past week, pro athletes have taken to the court wearing I Can't Breathe t-shirts in the NBA, also the football field, uh, with their hands up. It's a sign of solidarity and support regarding all of the various protests in the streets, folks uh, fighting against police brutality. Joining us to talk, chat about this is NBA great Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas, also joined the studio by Eton Thomas, former NBA player, and he's also co-host of the show, The Collision. First of all, gents, welcome to the show. Isaiah, I want to start with you. It's very uh, before we, before I, I, I get your thoughts. So here, here's is here's Bill O'Reilly whining and complaining <laughs> about athletes taking a stand. Check this out. If you're going to throw in as a professional athlete or an actor or on stage, by the way, I'm not talking about in your private life. I'm not talking about that. But if you're in an arena where people have paid money to come and see you and you're working for a team, all right, and then you, you make a statement, a political statement, as these statements are, I don't mind that if you defend the statement articulately as the, the Rams players could not do that because they didn't even know that don't shoot hands up don't shoot was debunked by the forensic evidence in Ferguson they didn't even know that all right they, they thought that hands up don't shoot was what actually happened so they, their protest was based on a fallacy okay first of all I think it's hilarious we have Oh, let's say 90% of the witnesses actually said that. Right. Uh, and so actually Bill O'Reilly is wrong on that one. But Isaiah, I, I love this whole notion of Bill O'Reilly saying, essentially athletes are so dumb, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> That's really what he was trying to right. say. Yeah. Right. Well, at, activism and, and sports have always gone hand in hand in this country. And uh, you can go all the way back to uh, the Olympics with uh, Jesse Owens. Uh, in sport, we've had Muhammad Ali, we've had Jim Brown, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Russell, uh, and a number of other athletes who have put their careers and have also expressed their opinions uh, within the sporting arena. And the sporting arena has always been a place where society has really come to discuss really tough, hard issues because sports is the place where you're supposed to have a level playing field. You're supposed to have uh, equality for all. And it's the place where society really gravitates to in terms of looking at uh, society and social order in terms of how equality really could, can and should work. Sports is supposed to give you that. The values that we project in sport kind of mirror society. So when you look at sport, we do have tough and hard conversations there. And it's not surprising to me that this would be the place for activism. Eton, I love the folks like Bill O'Reilly and others who are mad because athletes are standing up. They're the same folks who whine saying athletes should stand up. And in fact, Geraldo, I had to smack him around on Twitter yesterday. Right. He had the audacity to say, well, why aren't they wearing, you know, daddy's matter and stuff along those lines. So I love it how folks like Bill O'Reilly, Geraldo, and others want to now tell athletes, especially black athletes, what they should be focused on as opposed to be saying, no, they got the right to talk about whatever they want to talk about. Well, the problem is that they don't feel that they do. You know, and I definitely commend all the different athletes for being able to have the courage to be able to stand up uh, for what they believe in, especially because they know that the criticism is going to come. Um, I was interviewing uh, Dr. John Carlos yesterday on our show, The Collision, I co host with Dave Zirin. We were talking about the criticism that they received when they came back from the 68 Olympics. And he was talking about how they tried to demonize them and they had tried to ridicule them and, and um, just tear down their entire message. And uh, how the way that that's happening right now with the different players now. And it's interesting because I was watching Bill O'Reilly as well and he was talking about how um, you know he's saying well when I get stopped by the police I just you know follow their instructions and everything is fine and I'm just like Bill O'Reilly you have to understand that there's a whole different experience when you get stopped by the police than what we get stopped by the police. town car so his town right. car drivers <laughs> get stopped. Right. right 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 but, it's, but it's, he ain't it's, driving it's, home that's true but it, there's a, there's this bubble that people think that athletes are kind of protected from when it comes up for the police and that's just not true well in, fa in fact uh, Isaiah and I'm gonna go to the panel as well uh, we know the story especially for years athletes have had have had issues especially in Miami uh, and uh, where, where uh, I think uh, several athletes uh, were pulled out of cars had to sit on the curb for 45 minutes to an hour uh, while the cops searching their vehicles so professional athletes know this experience not just growing up in neighborhoods but even as being professional athletes you're absolutely right because being a professional athlete doesn't 
uh, you're still an African-American male in this country. Uh, and just because you become a professional athlete and you do um, financially uh, move up the ladder, uh, your skin color doesn't change. And there are, um, you know, as we, we're seeing across the country and we're seeing protests um, internationally supporting uh, the way African Americans have been treated in this country. So uh, everyone uh, who, who has a story to tell and are telling their stories, regardless of all financial means or um, the privilege that we may have by uh, being well known, we are still subjected to uh, the biases and the perception of different media outlets and also some police officers. The problem that Bill O'Reilly and these people have is that these are black males asserting themselves on an issue that binds black people together. When it's Charlton Heston and Marlon Brando, right. when it's Charles Barkley running his mouth, throwing the community under the bus, they put these guys on 24 seven. So when right. you say something negative about black people, particularly about black males, you get airing, you get on TV, you get columns, mm -hmm. you get airtime. That's the only reason they have Charles Barkley on. They wouldn't have him yeah. on if he said something positive about black males, they wouldn't have Charles Barkley on. So that's the issue. It's black males asserting themselves, powerful, wealthy black males asserting themselves. And, and, and that's the other thing, and I don't want to talk about the, the power of mm -hmm. wealth, in particular Charles mm -hmm. Barkley, and, and even Robert Smith, who I had a conversation with on Twitter. Look, everybody has a right to protest, whether you're on a team or not, and that's critical and that's important. Right, right. But not everybody's opinion on these issues is credible. And that's why there's a difference between protesting and, say, Charles Barkley, who's treated like an expert right, when he's put right. on certain networks to exactly. talk 24 hours a day about issues that he hasn't been connected to in the last 25 years, given his background and, and know, record. So that's what matters as well. Lastly, the irony that these people don't get is that they say they want their entertainment to be seen and not heard, where these athletes are simply being human beings, right. which is what the Black Lives Matter piece is, which exactly. means we we are human beings, treat us as such, and yet the pushback against these athletes are, go play ball. We right. don't want to hear yeah. that. Nobody cares about the politics when it's, when it's, when it's pro 9-11, when right. it's pro-military, when right. people are wearing badges That's about right. missing well, soldiers. Or, or, Nobody cares about or, that. Or when it's October, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, where, 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 these are league-wide initiatives. Right. Uh, and, but when you stand up on an innately black issue, see, that's the thing, because if you were doing 9-11, nobody would say anything. Well, exactly. it comes but, from but, a, black, a right. black center space. Exactly. That's what now it, This is the black-centered movement. That's right. And now it's like, wait a minute, we don't have autonomy over this, we don't have control of this, That's right. we're pushing back. Final comment, Eton. And even more to this, there's a certain disconnect that mainstream America has to thinking of Bill O'Reilly's that, that they have the same experience that we have. You know, what I, right. I, and I've said this before, that you know they have to give the police a reason to use excessive force, a reason to pull out their gun, but we have to give them a reason not to. And that's something that middle America just can't understand that experience. 20 seconds left. Isaiah, final comment. I, I, I would uh, piggyback on what Eton is saying. There's a bigger issue in this country when you, and we really have to move past uh, the discussion of race and really start dealing with perception and bias because that's where we're really at uh, when when you feel fear because you look at a black male then we have a problem in this country and um, we need to really start having a hard discussion about perception and bias and implicit bias all right isaiah thomas hall of fame we're sure appreciate it thanks a lot Eton thomas thanks a bunch as well